Hey everybody, I'm Nathan. Every week I do comic book reviews because that's the rule around my house. If I want to keep buying them, i got to review them. So, this is going to be the review for Red Skull Incarnate number 3 of 5. This is by Greg Pak and Mirko Kolak. And Matthew Wilson is the colorist. Uh, David Aja did the amazing covers that everybody's raving about, of course. Uh, the covers is one of the main reasons why I really started reading this. I didn't even know what kind of connection it had to the uh, Magneto Testament story that had been done before. But basically, if you don't know anything about this, this is the story of uh, the Red Skull as a child. How he grew up uh, as a German boy who became uh, a Hitler's right-hand man at some point. I don't know if they're going to get that far, but... Uh, this is a very difficult book to review because it's highly historical. It's uh, it's almost like historical fiction, I think, is what you call it, where they they're weaving an extra story into actual history going on here. Uh, the majority of the story uh, is kind of following along uh, the Red Skull uh, Schmidt and his who the people he's come in contact with how he's become kind of a criminal over his years and uh, what he starts to think about his peers at his same age uh, and then the real money here uh, is towards the end uh, and you get glimpses of it throughout uh, after the uh, the main story kind of finishes it goes on to tell you historical facts about what happened and show you how that affected um, affected uh, Schmidt's life here and how he got to be there. So it's pretty intense. Um, I mean, he is a bad guy, and he definitely uh, you know where he's going ahead of time, uh, but you're kind of watching this kid unfold and become this man that's supposed that's really bad, right? So. Um, I'm always trying to look for deeper sociopath, sociological problems uh, that are there and kind of apparent in uh, uh, Johann's choices and his decisions and the way he talks and interacts with people. But you don't see a lot of it. You see a general petty criminal here. Um, in the past couple issues, you really have gotten a lot more... Um, how do you put it? Where you've got a lot more of his personality. You see a lot more of his inane, like craziness that's deep down. That's not crazy to him, and really, it's really straightforward. Even as a young boy, here he came off a lot like a criminal who's frustrated with uh, people that don't do what he likes to do. Uh, and I did have a little bit of trouble uh, discerning who the other boys were. Now, at the end, you find out that one of these boys is like a really famous person uh, who set a really famous fire in Germany at this time. But uh, the rest of the time, like, uh, there's three different young boys in here, and two of them look a lot alike. So it was difficult for me to really see who was who and what exactly was happening. And it's been a while since I've read the other issues, the previous two issues, so I'm having a hard time totally understanding who those guys were from his as in relation to his past. So I'm going to have to go back and reread all five issues when it's done here to really get the full effect of the story as it's meant to be done. But I do like it. I think it's really good. I think it's, it's obviously a lot of work has gone into it, and uh, it's very interesting to see a different perspective of this time frame. Uh, growing up in Germany right before the... Uh, the Nazis start to take over. That, that's pretty crazy. It's not that you don't see that story very often in, in many other media outlets. You always see from the other side, either from the Americans' viewpoint or from the Jews' viewpoint during this time. But uh, it's very different and very interesting. And it makes it very hard to review this book. Um, I'm sure there's a lot of things here that are deeper than they look or if you knew more about this historical time than I do it would mean more to you but um, for me it's kind of a confusing story and kind of a lot of things that I feel like I'm supposed to know but don't know that are going on um, uh, this is so it's difficult to give it uh, much more than a three out of five ish 
I have a feeling that there's a lot more here than I'm really getting from it and that it really should be a four or even a five but this is issue specifically speaks to a three out of five for me personally now when I go back and read the entire series it might be much 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 better than that for me but for now that's what I'm giving it uh, number three Red Skull Incarnate uh, three of five is a three out of five hey, convenient huh so there you go if you like that review and want to see others done by me, then check out uh, all the reviews on YouTube under Spidey207, or follow me under Pete Parker on Twitter and iFanboy and the Marvel and DC databases and Comic Vine, wherever you see this. Uh, I really appreciate you guys t watching out there and uh, giving your comments, and thanks for listening. We'll talk to you next time.